This is a Stuart M3A1 light tank. This particular one came into the UK a few years ago in a batch of about 14. It was bought by a local collector, local to us, and uh, he decided to move it on to us. He had enough work on, so uh, we've taken on the project. So just here you've got all the dials that the uh, driver would be needing, and here at the front you've got the sticks, and as you can see with this one, it is very, very stiff. So there's a lot of work left to do in here. So behind me, you've got the turret basket. And as you can just see down here, you've got the hydraulic traverse pump, which powered the turret basket so you could actually spin it around. This one has been leaking, which is quite fortunate for us because it means that the tur turret basket floor is actually being kept in well, relatively good condition. OK, today's plan is to uh, lift the turret off. We've already undone all the, uh, all the mounts around the edge there. So now we're just going to put some chains on there and give it a gentle tug and see what happens. Uh, we can only lift it so far up because then we have to get to the, uh, to the collector ring underneath there and uh, take all the wires off. That's it. Whew. That is the wires out. Good condition, really good condition, although we will more likely than not re rewire it. And that's the collector ring, free. So all we've got to do now is lift the tourist out. You can see why we need to take the turret off. We can now work in this area quite easily. You can actually undo bits clean everything up, see exactly what we're up against. We've got to get the seat out and make some brackets, etc. Pull all these tins out, all these boxes. The turret basket is off. Managed to uh, disconnect it from the turret. Took a bit of doing, but uh, she's now off. We've cleaned her up, given her a pressure wash and a bit of a steam clean, and uh, absolutely over the moon with it. There is virtually no rot. The oil that's been leaked all over it has preserved it. It's got the original paint still, part of the original paint under it and really really good condition. Turret basket is now stripped, all the parts are off and uh, Nitro is here saying his prayers. What are you up to Nitro? I'm just disconnecting the electric motor here from the switching system. This uh, switch is actually faulty internally. It's, uh, it's actually seized inside but so I don't want to force it. So I've just taken this off here, break this into three individual units so I can then work on them uh, in a more orderly fashion. This thing weighs an absolute ton. But we're quite confident this will uh, this will be working and we'll have the turret traversing, aren't we? Absolutely, 100%, yeah. Excellent. Today we've managed to uh, take the front armour off, as you can see. It's now allowed us to get into this area here. We found all sorts of bullets and bits and pieces in the bottom of there, which is quite interesting. Dashboard's come off. Um, Tim is in there, you can just about see his backside. He's uh, working on getting the prop shaft out of that now. Uh, so we can get down right into the bottom. Once we've got all this clear, we can then start on uh, sandblasting. Now we are hoping that we can split the track somewhere back here, which involves... What does it involve, Nitro? Lots of heat. Lots of heat. Lots of heat in here. That's a three-quarter nut on top of this little uh, chop here. Heat that up, chop it out, slide these off, which is going to be dead simple. <laughs> and then... Uh, Draw it forward, rolling the track off. So there we go. Heated up the uh, first of the two locking nuts that hold the chops in. You've got to go really steady heating this up because of course you've got rubber tracks. It would be great if we could reuse the originals. So we're just going to go nice and steady to start with. As big as possible, in a couple of minutes, it will all be out. Well, I have one of the tracks split. A bit of doing, but uh, that's one of them done. Unfortunately, my partner in crime disappeared an hour ago to uh, run a crew for the tank battles, so it's a bit more difficult on your own. We have one more to take off, and assuming I don't have a heart attack before, before too long, we should have these tracks off. When Stu draws forward, the tracks are just going to roll off, and here they go. I have to be careful that they don't uh, snag. So that looks like it's coming off a treat, onto that final top roller, onto the final drives, and there they both go. Look at that, brilliant. Tracks have been removed. Idea here is that we've, uh, when you see the tracks, 
They were really rough on the outside, but the underside that, that ran on the wheels is, uh, is like new. So what we're going to do is actually turn them out, sort of inside out um, and run on the good stuff. Uh, take this panel off the top here. This gives us access to the engine. Um, so when that's off, we can then lift the engine out. A nice radial uh, seven cylinder. What we have to do to get it out is take the, uh, the starter off up here, um, a few fittings in there to, to remove, um, and then she lifts out through the top. And that's the engine out. Very pleased with the way it's turned out as well in here. There's a lot of junk and, and crud in the bottom but there's no rot. Most of the uh, oil that seeped, seeped out of everywhere has actually preserved it. So we will change the hoses and a few of the pipes, but the majority of it is actually in really, really good condition. We've got the filters down there and even the oil sump. Absolutely perfect oil in it, really good condition. Here we have the front arm that has already been removed. Um, this is obviously the underside. This is where your 30 cal uh, machine gun would go. The driver would be on that side. Obviously it would be the other way up. Um, but we're really pleased with it. Everything is in really good condition. Um, all we've done with it is sandblast it and just give it a first coat of, uh, of red oxide just to, uh, just to protect it till we can get it painted properly. Um, this is the main gun. Everything in here is in really good condition. Um, a bit rusty but other than that she's very complete and uh, we're really really pleased with her again. What we're going to do now is going to take the gun out of this again um, so it gives us more access and then we're going to take anything out that is loose, these boxes, etc. Sandblast the inside, uh, and respray it, and put it back together again. Look at that for a fuel cap. I see. We take the uh, top armour off the fuel tanks, and uh, gives us access. So once we've disconnected the bottom, we should be able to lift those out. Although I bet it won't be quite as easy as that. You can actually see where they've got a wood lining around it to protect it. The trouble is that quite often swells and uh, makes it quite difficult to get the tanks out but we'll have to uh, see how we go. Now we've just got the other one on the other side to do and then uh, that'll give us a lot more access to uh, getting the tanks out. So today's task we are going to try and get these blocks all connected back up together again. We've done a few there so that is one of the jobs we're going to try and get done today. Got all the new uh, all the new nuts. All these have got to be sandblasted. These are the wedges that hold it all together. But by the end of the day, hopefully you'll have a we'll have a complete track laid out ready to fit. We've also got Nitro's working on a few other bits and pieces just over here. As you can see, he's now finally got these painted, cleaned up and painted. We needed to do a little bit of work on the uh, on the one oil box there, but uh, the uh, the rest of it is in pretty good condition. And then we have him up here in his German German overalls. It's only yeah. because he keeps growing out of the other ones. Too many Christmas pies. No, no, they're shrink. The trouser moths get out of them. Yeah, if you're going to go to the collector rig, uh, I've already done the rewiring in this. Just going to get it clean now, get her painted up. And hopefully the next day or two we can start building up the tourist basket, which I'm really looking forward to. Get all the hydraulics working. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And uh, the turret basket is just around here. As we showed you before, the toilet basket was in fairly good condition, so we didn't have to do too much to that. Lots of other bits have been painted and ready to go on. All of these bits. These are the bearings we showed you last week. These are the parts they fit into. He's just painted them, so I won't touch them. Else he'll, uh, he'll only moan at me from putting fingerprints on everything. So, so far, from the clips you've just seen, you'll, uh, you'll realise the, the amount of work that's already gone into it. We've been very lucky, we've taken the tops off the, uh, the final drive here, that was all mint inside, nothing to do in there at all. Gearbox we're pretty sure is good, uh, oil coolers have been taken off. Okay, so this is the internal gubbings of the oil filter. Um, just open it up to have a look, it's actually remarkably clean and uh, fully working. This is the filter system in here which allows the oil to flow through. And when you come to clean it, you simply turn the handle on the outside, you'll notice that uh, these little tongs here are uh, spaced in between the filter itself. So if I turn that, you see them digging in and cleaning any of the muck 
that's inside the filter. And it all bypasses, it's all lovely. And if it ever gets completely blocked, there's a little valve there, the ball bearing can move out and that allows the oil to bypass it. So give that a bit more of a clean up, happy days, that's all good and original. As you can see inside, it looks completely different. We managed to sandblast it, taken as many of the bits out as we could, or we needed to, um, and managed to get the sandblast in there and completely give it a good, good clean up. Uh, normally, again, we would have stripped this down to all the individual components, but with this one, we didn't have to. Everything was moving when we moved it, when we towed it in and out. Um, so the old grandma said, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. So we were more than happy to leave it as it was. So it saved us quite a bit of work. These are the fuel tanks that we've had remade. Made a lovely job of them. Well, just a, just a local company has done it for us. Cost me about a thousand pounds to get, them, get the pair made, which to be fair, isn't too bad. There's a lot of work gone into these. Um, we just could not use the others. The others are in such a state, so we're, we're more than happy with these. Um, we've got everything out that we could possibly get out that was, uh, that was necessary. Sandblasted, uh, everything in it that's left here is in working condition. So we're really, really pleased with this as well. It's gonna be rewired over the next couple of weeks. Um, and then we're hoping even to get the, uh, the stabilization unit in there working. It does all seem as though it should do, but watch this space. We'll do our best with that one. Uh, we have the live gun that goes back in here. We're registered firearms dealers, so we are allowed to have these, these, most of these tanks live. So this, th this one will actually fire once we've, uh, once we've finished it. Well, we'll obviously never put a live round through it, but we will fire a, fire a few blanks off just to, uh, just to try her out. Here we have the wings or the, the fenders. This go, these are the front of the Stuart. These go on the front uh, just above the tracks. This is actually the colour that it's going to be. This is the base coat. Um, and there's two other colours on it as well. But this is the, uh, the lower part of the hull will be this colour and then it sort of it goes up from there. But we just wanted to get a, get a bit of paint on it just so we could see exactly what it was going to look like. And then we've got all of these other parts here still got to, uh, to work on. You can see the two little domes there. They're the, the tops of the armoured um, fuel tank covers. Uh, you've got a traverse box there. That, that thing that's not been painted yet. Air filters. And then all, as you work your way over here, the stuff that we've sandblasted, that's the cowlings from around the engine and uh, that's the, uh, the front armour still there. So lots and lots still to do. The first job today is to put this track back onto the Stuart. So what I've got to do, because obviously there's no engine in it yet, I'm going to fit an A-frame on. I want to say we, this is the Royal we. And then we're going to pull it back a bit. So this lines up. Push it across, push it back on, and simple as that, the track will be on. We have managed to get the, the prop shaft fitted, or pretty well fitted. Uh, the throttle's all adjusted, pipe work's all sorted in there now. The engine was obviously fitted last week, and that is now all plumbed in, ready to go. One of the challenges we had was actually getting the gun back inside the, uh, the turret. The gun didn't actually come with the tank, not actually fitted already, we, uh, we got that separately. And uh, to say it was a tight fit is an understatement. It actually has to, has to go through a hole in the back of the turret, which if they made it half an inch bigger, would have made life so much easier. But for some reason, they decided uh, to make it a bit more challenging for the, uh, for the gun crew. When we first got it, it couldn't move it at all. And now she moves very easily. One of the hard things which uh, anybody who has had to deal with these kind of tracks will, uh, will vouch for, is taking these end connectors off. They were, uh, each one of those has to come off, one on either side, and basically can be swapped over. The only problem is they've not been off for very, very many years, and they don't like to come off. So we have to hammer every single one of them off, clean it all up, and then put it back on on the opposite side. We had to uh, improvise with a few other, other parts. Some of the parts are absolutely unobtainable. We cannot get them. so. For example, this piece under here, this is your air filter and it's an oil bath. These pieces here always rot out or have been taken off because they're only clamped on. Can't find them, so what with this one here is, is a, uh, a cake tin. It was the right size. We man manufactured the inside to fit the oil into it. This is the original engine that came with the tank. But what we did, we took it out and we sent this one away. We didn't have time to try and fix it ourselves. And to be fair, it's, uh, it's a bit of a an art to get these running properly. So we sent this off to uh, a gentleman down in London who sorted it absolutely perfectly for us. She now runs beautifully. But what you can see is quite a lot of oil around. 
The reason for that is it's because it's a radial engine and when it's not running, the oil all runs to the bottom cylinder. So what we have to do is we wind the engine 50 odd times just to uh, get the oil circulated. But quite often, as, uh, once you fire it up, it blows the oil out of the exhaust and that drips everywhere until it's ran for a few minutes and it gets, uh, gets running nice and clean. So what you may see a lot of en engine oil on these radial engines. It doesn't mean the engine is worn out, it just means it's a radial engine. This is a seven-cylinder radial. Uh, on a Sherman, they fitted a nine-cylinder radial because uh, obviously it's a bit heavier, so it needed a bit more horsepower. This, I think the horsepower on this is around the 240, so plenty of this, uh, plenty of power to run this tank, which is weighing in at about 15 tonnes, so gives it a nice bit of power and a very good top speed. Talking about top speed, we're now going to show you a bit of footage of us actually running this the first time. Now, we did manage to get up to third gear, which, considering none of us had ever driven one of these before, was pretty good, and uh, we're only running around a field, so really and truly, to get any higher than that, you really want to be on a road or some uh, bit smoother ground. Thank <laughs> you. 